update on where we're at. Um, and it's all coming together. We're actually finally putting stuff in the boat. So stuff is getting finished. So last week, we showed you how all the hard work we'd put into the inside of the boat turned out. And to be honest, it turned out pretty good. This week, we make a start on the outside of the boat, but time is running out. So it looks good. Um, the headlinings are up, um, as you saw me do last week. So after spending four months on the inside, we now have just two weeks left to work on the outside. That includes sorting out the rusty keel, priming and painting the hull, including all those bits around the legs, which all add to the time. We want to clean and polish the top sides. We've got to prepare the mast, attach the new rigging we've had done, put the ropes back on it, clean it, etc. Plus, of course, we've got to get rid of that tent that we put up over the companionway hatch, the ropes on the deck, deck cleaning, the list goes on. Anyway, back to the start of that list, the keel. It's rusty, but we're not worried about the rust. Steel rusts when it's subjected to water if it's not protected, and you know, and that's just what happened. Our keel had been refitted in 2009 when Seahorse had had a full strip and salt out for racing. Plus, the whole joint seems good. There has never been any apparent movement, and all the bolts are still tight and are rust free. The problem comes from the way it has been fitted and fared. As is common practice, as part of its refit for its brief re racing career, the keel had been completely stripped and covered in filler and then sanded to a fine hydrodynamic finish, if that's the right term. And that's great, um, except uh, in one place some of that filler is chipped off, which is the rusty spot on the bottom of the keel, and where the keel meets the hull, they just use the same filler to fare in the joint. There's no flexible membrane of any sort. And of course, no matter how good a job they've done fitting that keel, as, as time goes on and you're sailing and the stresses of bouncing over waves and you know every, everything that goes on in, in sailing a boat, there's some flexing and that that takes place. And you only need a hairline crack and well, water gets in and what you see is the result. Anyway, what she really needs is a keel completely stripping off again and then refairing and sealing properly with a flexible seal. But we're not gonna do that. So what we're doing kind of amounts to a bit of a bodge, which isn't very satisfactory, but I think if we do a reasonable enough job, it'll be okay. Whether it lasts six months or six years, only time will tell. So what we did was we started with a coarse wire wheel on an old angle grinder. We used this to strip off the old paint, the rust, any loose filler material, everything around the areas, and then use some sandpaper on a on a sanding board to finally sand it back and feather off the edges. I then filled these areas with some epoxy filler that I had left over from the last time I worked in a rusty kill, which is quite a few years ago now, so I hope it's still okay. But it mixed up okay and went off fine, so I've no reason to think there's a problem. It's all go down here today, even though it's very windy, it's sunny weather, it's not too cold, it's a bit chilly, but it's all right. So uh, everyone's in a mad panic to do all those last minute things to get in the water. Of course, I've got a little bit more than just last minute things, but um, while I'm uh, letting the kill dry before the next bit of work, I thought I'd show you our um, the panels we put up on this front bulkhead. It's a sort of, we did it because we had to cover up the hole or the repair to the hole that was there. But now we've done it, actually, it's added to the boat. You know, it doesn't look like a uh, just to cover up, it actually, I think, enhances the boat. And we are really chuffed with the look. Anyway, I'll better get back. While I'm letting it dry, what I should be doing is fitting these seacocks, so I'll get on with that. Once cured, this was then sanded back and the area is given three coats of epoxy primer. I used Hempel products from this point forward as Seahorse was last painted in Hempel's hard racing fouling paint and I was going to use the same again so it seemed to make sense to stick to the primers from the same manufacturer. 
at least they should all then be compatible. Hempel's data sheet said that I should cover the last coat of this epoxy primer with their underwater primer while the epoxy primer was still tacky. Well, while I was waiting for this last coat to go off, I went to watch Izzy play hockey, so it was probably a little drier than this when I got back, but I don't think there was a problem. It certainly covered okay. Gave all the affected areas two coats of this primer, plus any other patches on the hull where, we'd, where I'd rubbed it back through to the gel coat, or where I felt for any reason that the, the uh, top coat or bottom coat, can I look at it, would need some extra encouragement to adhere. So the clocks have gone forward, there's a little bit of time in the evening now to start painting the boat. She's had um, three coats of the primer, the epoxy primer, then two coats of the underwater primer, all the Hempel stuff, and I'm now going to put a coat of, um, of the hard racing fouling paint on. Um, I imagine it's going to be dark by the time I finish, so I'll have the floodlights on, but um, see how we get on. Now up to this point, as you can imagine, it's all taken quite a bit of time. Not really due to the amount of work involved, but it's the amount of time it takes in between letting everything dry. By the time I got the chance to do this final top coat, the weekend had gone. So I did it on Monday night after work. Now that wasn't bad, because the clocks had just gone forward. So the evenings were starting to get lighter. However, with a very heavy cloud cover, this particular Monday night was very dark and applying <clears throat> a matte black paint onto a dark grey boat in the dark is not easy, even with a spotlight. But we got there in the end. It's still not finished, it needs a bit of a rub back. The roller started to break up at the last moment, so there's some flecks of um, foam and that stuck in it, which I've got to sand off and clean. Then I've got to do the legs. But yeah, we're getting there. So next week, we can concentrate on the final bits polishing, cleaning, removing all the junk, putting the rest of the cushions back on board, all that sort of thing. Anyway, that'll do for now. I'm Ian. You've been watching Sailing with the Foxwell family. See you again next week.